What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode of YNR, I enjoyed this episode. I really did. Um, this unholy alliance that Adam and Phyllis have, I'm loving it. I really am. I'm loving it. This is the type of drama I love in a show. Because you got two of the town's pariahs who are now working together to get what they want. I'm not mad at it. I'm really not because everybody else in town is so hypocritical. You know, they act like they're, you know, like they hold themselves to this higher standard than Adam and Phyllis. You know, they think that they're so much better than Adam and Phyllis. And when in reality, we all know that they've done worse. You know, they've done just as bad as Phyllis and Adam have. But yet they stick their noses. They look their noses down at them. So I'm not mad at Phyllis and Adam for working together to get what they want. And Phyllis definitely got what she wanted out this deal. Because Adam wanted her to hack into Dark Horse's servers. She told Adam she wanted two and a half million dollars. I said, damn. I said, well, I guess, hey, it costs to commit crimes, I guess. You know, corporate espionage, you know, I mean, I would get my money's worth too. Because corporate espionage ain't no joke. So... At, at first, after he put the money in her account, it seemed like she was growing a conscience for a second, like she didn't want to do it. Um, but, you know, Adam, he had to psych her up even more to about, oh, didn't Nick humiliate you as society and stuff and talk down to you and berate you? That just gassed her up even more and made her mad all over again, because you know how Phyllis is. When Phyllis gets mad, she reacts in the moment and does something stupid or deadly. But when she calms down, she has a chance to kind of think. You know what I'm saying? And that's what she was doing at the tack house. She was calming down and stuff after what happened with her and Nick. Because when Nick made her mad and stuff, you know, she was at first she turned Adam down about working with him. But once Nick made her mad at society and stuff like that, and Billy was talking down to her and, you know, once that happened, she got mad all over again and decided to work with Adam. But at the moment, again, she started to calm down collect herself and start to think and try to back out until Adam had to psych her up again. <laughs> like <laughs> Adam is definitely Victor's child. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Definitely. He's a mini Victor. That's why they call him Victor Adam Newman Jr. Even though it's Adam, but still that's his full name. Um, so she got in, hacked the uh, servers and stuff. And Adam did find something quite interesting. Um, Nick is basically leveraged, you know, he le he's leveraged up to his eyeballs, basically. He owes his investors $27 million. He owes the investor for, you know, because he had investors help him, you know, give him funding and stuff to start Dark Horse. So, of course, you know, that comes at a steep price when you're building up a big company, a new company. That's millions of dollars. So, of course, the price was steep. Adam saw that as his way to get back at Nick and the whole leverage over him. So he ended up calling the investor and buying the debt. So now he basically owns Nick's debt and he owns Dark Horse. Um, so now Nick owes him $27 million. It shouldn't be hard for Nick to give him $27 million. Even if Nick doesn't have that kind of cash on hand, which I'm sure he doesn't, he could easily get it from Victor. He could get it from Nikki. He can get it from Victoria Hill. He can get it from Abby. They all got money. I doubt he would go to Victor for the money, but he can still go to Nikki or whoever for the money. Like they could easily give him the twenty seven million to buy out Adam and get Dark Horse back. But, you know, Adam, he's not going to go for that. Adam only wants one thing, and that's Christian. And that's exactly what he bought that company for. He's going to he's bargaining with Nick, basically telling Nick he got twenty four hours to give him Christian he got to choose. Does he want Dark Horse or does he want Christian? Knowing Nick, I would have to say he's going to choose Christian over that company. I mean, it's a company. You know, Nick loves his kids. Um, I mean, I do agree with Nick. Christian, you know, Nick is the only father Christian knows. But Adam is his father. Adam does have the right, you know, to be his dad. If he wants, I mean, it's such a sticky situation for me. I'm trying to stay neutral. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to pick a side, like who should get Christian. But I will say Nick has done a great job with Christian raising him up a little, you know, in the, the years that he has been raising him. But 
I can understand Adam's beef, you know, of wanting his child. I get it. Um, I did like that scene, though, with um, Phyllis and Sharon. When Sharon saw Phyllis coming out of the tack house and stuff, being nosy, asking what she was doing there. You already know Phyllis ain't going to tell you the truth of why she's really there. But Phyllis had to let her know. She was like, ain't your little boyfriend going to be mad that you over here so concerned about Adam? Because, <laughs> of course, Phyllis had to get a day again. It's so crazy how when Phyllis got home, though, somebody grabbed her and injected some type of syringe into her. I'm like, who did that? I'm wondering if it got something to do with Kevin and Chloe. I wouldn't be surprised. I really wouldn't be. Because who else is going to do it? You know, kidnap Phyllis and inject her with some type of drug or something. Who else would do it? And we all know Kevin is coming back tomorrow, so I wouldn't be surprised if him or Chloe had something to do with that. Maybe they've been stalking and watching her working with Adam, maybe. Who knows? Um, it's getting interesting, though. I will say that. It's keeping me entertained. Um, and, of course, Ray is running around poking his nose at Adam's business. So he ran to uh, Nick and then ran to Sharon telling them how... Adam hired a private investigator to um, locate or to find Chloe Mitchell. And, every, and, you know, they were trying to wonder, like, why would Adam want to know or find a dead person, a supposedly dead person? See, Ray is not stupid. Ray was kind of on the money a little bit. He knew that if Adam was looking for Chloe, knowing that she's dead, then maybe she's not dead after all. And maybe she's the one who, who actually shot Adam. See, Ray was under money with that. Everybody else thinks that Adam is trying to find her to get to Chloe. I mean, to get to Chelsea. But how would Chloe know where Chelsea is, though? There's no way for her to know that. Because even Chelsea thought Chloe was dead. So how would she know? And they weren't on the best of terms anyway when Chloe supposedly died. Before Chloe supposedly died, her and Chelsea were not on the best of terms because Chelsea found out that Chloe was the one who set that bomb to kill Adam. So why would she know where Chelsea and Connor are? There's no way. I think he's looking for her because I think Ray would probably write the first time. She's the one who shot him. So, of course, he's looking for her. Maybe he knows. You know, it has something to do with something, but I don't think it has anything to do with Chelsea. But then again, Adam wouldn't know. That Chelsea and Chloe were on outs though, because he was supposedly dead at that point. So again, he probably wouldn't know that. So then again, he probably is looking for her to get to Chelsea. But there's other ways to find Chelsea. He has her phone number. You know what I mean? I mean, Adam has her phone number, so he could use the number and give the number to the PI to maybe trace the number, track it somehow, and figure out where she is. Like he could do that. There's ways of doing it. I don't know, but it's all pretty interesting, though. I mean, I do agree with Phyllis on one thing. You know, you don't want to underestimate Nick. But then again, I never really seen Nick as ruthless enough. Like, he doesn't have that ruthlessness in him that Victor and Adam has. I mean, even a part of Victoria got that ruthlessness in her. You know, but even she's not she's not a match for Adam either, to be quite honest. I mean, we've seen that. I mean, he manipulated $50 million out of her. <laughs> and she thought that she handled Adam no Adam handled you you handed him the keys to basically take Nick down and you don't even know it like she literally handed him the the ammunition he needed to take Nick down I wonder how Nick's gonna feel when he finds that out basically his own sister just sold him out by her giving him that 50 million it afforded him the money to buy the debt that Nick owed to the investor to take over Dark Horse. And you gave you snuck into Nick's phone and gave him the number for Chelsea and Connor. So you gave him pretty much damn near everything he wanted in his list of demands. And what did she get in return? What, that he wasn't coming back to Newman? The plan was to get him out of town and she didn't even get that accomplished. And he could still come back to Newman. So, <laughs> like... She really didn't handle the situation like she thought she did. And her and Billy were sitting there giving each other, you know, giving her props and patting her on the back like she handled and, you know, neutralized Adam. When in reality, you didn't. You did neither of the, of the two. You didn't handle him. He handled you. I'm just saying it. It was a, a great handle, too. Adam manipulated the hell out of her. The sad thing is she don't even realize it. But she will soon. 
Um, so anyway, this whole situation with Kyle and Lola, it, it, it irritates me because they're moving way too fast. Like, okay, first y'all moving in together, fine. That's too soon, but that's fine, whatever. Now he's sitting there proposing and she's saying yes. Like, you're not even divorced yet. Even he said it. He's not even divorced from Summer yet. So why are they moving so fast with this marriage stuff? You know, like they're too young. Like y'all are young. Y'all got like a lot of time to be talking about marriage and stuff like that. Why enter a new marriage when you're not even fully out of the old one yet? You know what I mean? Like it's too soon. And then, you know, he's sitting there hanging up banners at the apartment talking about he's sorry. I don't understand, Kyle. Like, why does he always feel the need to apologize to Lola all the time? You didn't do anything wrong. You proposed. She wasn't ready at that point to accept it. So why do you feel like you messed up and, oh, I got to apologize. I got to do something to fix it. That's why their whole relationship annoys me. Like, their whole relationship gets on my nerves because it's always him apologizing for something. What are you apologizing for? You didn't do anything wrong. Like, it annoys me how he feels like every time he says, like, he has to walk on eggshells with Lola. Like, every little thing he does or say, she kind of, you know, acts a certain way. and He feels like, oh, I messed up. I got to apologize. It's stupid. It's like, stop. Stop trying to be somebody that she wants you to be or whatever the case may be. Like, stop doing that. Like, be you. Be Kyle Abbott. And if she can't accept Kyle Abbott for who Kyle Abbott is, then she don't need to be with Kyle Abbott. Period. He is who he is. You know, he grew up rich. He can't help that. He wants to marry you. I can understand her hesitation on it, though. I get it, you know, because she probably hasn't been around a lot of healthy relationships and neither has he. So I can, I can understand why she's hesitant about it because it's a major step. So, of course, she had to take some time to really think, it, uh, think about it and stuff, you know, talk to her brother about it and get some advice. And Ray was right. She's moving too fast. You don't need what's the big rush on marriage. Why are y'all rushing? Y'all should be enjoying each other's company, enjoying y'all relationship, all of that good stuff. Why complicate it by getting married right now when you don't have to? And my thing about Summer is I kind of like her and Theo together. I mean, they need to slow down with all them tequila shots, though, but I kind of like them together. But Summer, you know, she always thinks marriage is boring and it's for old people or whatever. But I do agree with Summer. I mean, at your age, you should be just living your life, enjoying yourself, enjoying, you know, the person that you're with. Why do you have to do marriage at that age? You know, they are in their early to mid 20s. So why are y'all rushing to get married? There's no rush. And I can understand why she, you know, she's fighting hard to, you know, try to get over Kyle, which I wish she would. Because, you know, you shouldn't want to be with somebody who don't want to be with you. But I do feel like at some point, you know, Kyle sitting there talking about, oh, he, you know, he made a mistake by marrying Summer. Bro, I do feel like he still has feelings for Summer. Definitely he does. Because the way he acted when she brought Theo to the party, that tells me he still got some feelings. He got concerns. Like, he may be feeling conflicted. Um, But I wish Summer would just get over him, like... He's, you know, he doesn't want you. So he says, so move on with your life. Sign those divorce papers, annulment papers, whatever, and move on. And I'm glad that, you know, she decided that whatever she's doing with Theo, they're not going to label it. They're not going to put nothing on it. They just going to, you know, enjoy each other's company, which I think she should. That's the best way. So anyway, moving on from that. Um... I love the scene with Devon and, and Mariah and stuff like that. And I understand why Mariah wants to step down from GC Buzz because without Hillary, she feels like it's not fun for her anymore. And especially after that whole stalker little incident not too long ago, like it put things into perspective for her. Like she's more behind the scenes. You know, that's what she wants to do. She wants to be creative and create and help people and do, you know, more behind the scenes stuff, you know, and I can't say that I blame her. I thought she was going to go into like talent artist management, maybe, and manage Tessa's career and stuff because, you know, she gives her a lot of advice on her career already, um, especially trying to help her with her image and, you know, what she wants to do, what direction she wants to go in with her career. So that's what I thought she was going to be doing, like working with artists and stuff. And technically, she kind of will be 
with the job that Devon gave her. So basically, he he's putting her in charge of power communications. Um, you know that little PR company that Neil was running and stuff like that that he loved to run. Um, you know, helping out with events and with people images and stuff like that, doing photo shoots and all that to help people's image. You remember the stuff Neil was doing with Victor and stuff like that and Newman Enterprises. So basically, Mariah is going to be kind of doing that, which I think is pretty dope. I think that's cool. You know, she gets to help with people's images. And, you know, I think that can go a long way with a lot of people's career, you know, in the music industry, the business community. I think that's a great career. And I'm glad Devon gave that to her. Cause I think she'll be dope at it. You know, she wasn't too sure about it because she didn't want to let him or Neil down. But I think she'll be pretty good at it. And I think it's a good career for her. Um, that's something I wouldn't mind doing either career wise, you know, because that's a pretty cool career. Helping people with their image and stuff like that, whatever image they want or what you see for them, you know, just collaborating and stuff, being creative. You know, that's pretty cool. It's a dope career. Um Tessa, you know, of course, is still nervous about, you know, singing and stuff like that in her career because I don't know. She just is hesitant with this career and stuff. But I think she's a good, you know, singer and stuff, you know, and especially on the guitar and all that. You know, she's very talented. But of course, you know, she's a little insecure and she has to break out of that shell, you know, to be in the music business because the music industry is rough. It's tough. And you really have to get your insecurities in check. You know, if you're going to be in that business and pull it together, because that's a that's a savage business right there. It really is. Um, it's cutthroat. So if she's going to be in that business, she got to get it all the way together. But um, anyway, I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. I thought this was a great episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I will see y'all all later. Peace.